Defiant Season 3, Episode 5, History Rhymes. I have to say, I think this was, without a doubt, this is definitely my favorite episode of Defiant so far. And we've had some pretty insane episodes, um, especially in the last season. We had some just pretty crazy stuff. But I just love the way they did this episode. It was just so incredibly well done. We had two huge surprises just from, I guess, the main storyline between... Nolan and Arissa, we got two really big surprises that we never really heard about before. And then, of course, we had um, sort of just the whole Tar family storyline and how that kind of blended with the Yomek and stuff like that. But the sort of main storyline with Nolan and Arissa being knocked out in the Arctic, um, kind of linking them, and also just, you know, the progression, everything I think was just really well done this episode. But the main story giving us these flashbacks... Uh, starting off with the past, which I, I really loved, because I was like, the first thing I thought when they showed that was like, we've never really had this. We've had flashbacks of characters before, during the wars, where they were struggling to survive and things like that. But I can't really remember a time where we actually had, you know, just normal everyday life. And it wasn't, you know, it was when the aliens were still there, which was something else that surprised me, because I thought that... Um, it was just going to be normal life, and I really, I guess I really haven't been paying attention these past couple years, but I didn't remember the fact that the aliens were there, uh, before attacking. I thought, like, you know, I thought it was just like they came and they attacked the same day. So, I guess that was something that kind of just got refreshed for me, because I was completely, I completely forgot that that's how it worked out. But I thought it was cool, we learned that Nolan had a sister, and of course... Um, it was obvious where that was going to lead to. I was surprised that they did it so early on because I thought that what they were going to do is kind of build up um, sort of this connection. Of course, you know, it's a brother and a sister, and he was the younger of the two. And, you know, I guess it depends on how you look at it in, in certain aspects, which is um, a more difficult loss, I guess. But, you know, I was surprised that they kind of played out his storyline so quickly as far as the flashbacks go. And, you know, it just goes from that first interaction and stuff, which was very well done. And his sister, you know, kind of being the tough one and what he aspired to become. And then it jumps years ahead into the war. And we instantly see, just in the second flashback alone, his sister being killed. Because no one thought that, you know, one of the um, Votans was actually giving up. And he didn't want to fight. And that resulted in his sister's death. And I love the way that they played that one. That was, I think that was my favorite flashback just because of the interaction that they had with the characters, especially from Nolan. I, I love the ending flashback that they had for sure, but I think that was my favorite because, of course, Nolan had the reaction that I think most people would have, which is he, you know, it was his fault. And as soon as he saw that person and, you know, it just clicked in his head, you know, he pulled his gun out and he just was trying to destroy this memory and change something that couldn't possibly be helped and I just love the way that they played with that and you know the range of emotion that he had just in that one flashback alone because he was so angry and he was you know so scared as well and then you of course when it played out he was just so sad and he just had to relive probably you know definitely one of the worst moments um, of his life and we even hear mention of his parents and how they were you know they had empty coffins at their funeral because they were flat out vaporized so we got a lot of exposition, well done exposition, I'd say. It wasn't like, all of this happened to us, and it was just like a long paragraph. It was just like, here are a couple of random things, and it's like, this is what happened, and this is why I'm telling you this, because we have to focus. You know, his sister was saying, like, you know, I want revenge, you know, don't you? So it was just really well done, and I love that flashback because of the reaction from Nolan, because we don't get that. He is, he really is like the tough guy sort of character, so it was great to see that real big show of emotion, which he only, you know, at this point, typically, he only tends to have for Arissa. So, it was just really great to see that reaction from him, and then it kind of jumps ahead to after the war is over, and, you know, Arissa's there at the bar, you know, young Arissa, and she's like, you know, she doesn't remember this. And initially, I thought it was just her memory, and I thought they were just oddly in the same place at the same time. But, you know, it's like she's in the bar, and then... No one comes in for whatever reason. She was in there by herself for like two whole minutes. They were in the flashback, and then he walked in. But I'm guessing, you know, he just went somewhere else. So he went to the bathroom, restroom, or whatever. But 
you know, we have this flashback that starts the transition from Nolan's memories to Arissa's, and I thought it was really good. It was the first one where it was like, you know, he comes in, he's like, you know, Earth is for humans and stuff, and everyone's cheering, and it's just like, oh, man, you know, times have changed, you know. And so, it's like he's saying all this stuff, and they have, like, you know, one of the Votans basically as a, as a living dartboard, and I thought he was dead until Nolan actually stabbed him in the neck, and he, like, was shaking after being stabbed, I thought he, it was just a dead body they were just tossing at him. And so, you know, that made it even more visceral. He's like, you know, Earth is for us. And, you know, we took all of the aliens out and we killed them and this and that. And then, of course, that kind of jumps to Orissa's memories and how she, you know, they, they're going back and forth. Like, you know, you were different. You know, you didn't grow up with all the horrors and stuff. And then we get the flashback of Nolan uh, teaching Orissa. Like, this is you know, what I know, like, he called this person brother, I forgot the actual alien term that he used, but he basically has a life debt to kill us because we killed him, so, you know, he's not gonna just, you know, pack it up and walk away, so we have to follow through, and she kills this, um, alien, and it's just like, you know, she was kind of destroyed by that, and, and it was just so well done, and I love that, and then, of course, it goes to just the huge, you know, the other really big moment, and she was about to kill Nolan and then she just gets caught and it's like that I just wasn't expecting and that was just a great moment I love that it was a really great surprise where she mentioned she was scared of him and she just wanted to kind of get rid of this person that taught her great lessons you know you can't argue that but sometimes you know based on what happens depending on how you have to learn the lesson mentally it might not be worth it for you so I just love the way that they played with that and the way that it worked. And then, you know, we learn, you know, why they're going through all this is because of the Arctic and how it had to adapt to, really it had to adapt to Nolan because he was human and not a part of the um, Botanist Collective. So as a human, it's like, which I think is kind of funny a little bit when you think about it, it's like all, you know, the Votans is just like, you know, you're fine. And then just human biology, it doesn't work. Um... But it, it was just, you know, it was cool how that worked out. And then it's like, well, I couldn't actually, you know, the doctor, she couldn't stop it. So she had to repair it. And then it's like, well, you know, you guys have to stick together by the end of the episode. And I really thought we were going to lose Arissa. And it was, it was really interesting. I'm like, okay, well, if she leaves, obviously she's not going to be gone for the rest of the series. So I knew that for sure. And it's like, okay, well, it'll be interesting to see how this show works out with Arissa being gone, at least for a time. And it's like, you know, this is really interesting. And they have their issues, but they do work through it. And no one's like, okay, well, I kind of pushed you into becoming more like me and you're not like me. And we, I feel like they did a really good explanation for Arissa because one of the things was that, you know, and it was a good explanation even before this episode, but... You know, with the way things started off and the way things ended last season with her sort of just wiping out all these innocent people and causing all this just mass hysteria, you know, it, it made perfect sense that she didn't want to kill people. And then in this episode, we get an even deeper connection to her being sort of a pacifist at this point because she never really wanted to do that to begin with. It was just one of those things that was, you know, necessary. So I love the way that they did that and she made the decision to leave, and then it's like, well, unfortunately, you guys have to stick together, so I don't know how that's going to change the characters, especially after they had the little moment where it was nice, and then Orissa kind of just has her dream sort of just shot down, and it just instantly takes her right back to sort of, in a way, a little bit kind of despising Nolan and wanting to just be away from him, because she doesn't actually have that opportunity anymore, so I thought it was incredibly well done. It was definitely... Yeah, you know, that's what made it my favorite episode of the series just so far. Just the way they did it and the surprises. And it was just really dramatic. And it was really nice and calming. And they were, I think, pretty much every shot with them in this episode, aside from them, uh, like, being on the tables and talking to the doctor, it was just, like, open fields or, like, you know, just in these new locations we've never seen before and stuff like that. So we had like Nolan at his home which was very different we got to actually see the city and stuff like that which was just pretty crazy and different which was nice we got the bar scene with all the different people which obviously we have the need want but it was a different bar it had like a Hawaiian theme and it just had a different feel to it and then we have you know 
the open fields are fairly the same. We see open fields a lot, but it wasn't like we're on a mission to do this or do that. We're kind of just trapped in each other's minds. Let's figure out why we're doing this and let's just talk and kind of explain some of the crazy things that have happened, some of which, you know, Arissa didn't even remember. So I just love the way that they did that throughout the entire thing. And I just thought, overall just incredibly well done i loved every single portion of that especially you know the big surprises like hearing about nolan's sister and of course arissa um attempting to kill nolan you know at the end and i just all of it was really great and then we of course have the other side of the story which is always the other side of the story it's going to be the tar family and just everything they're doing and the highs and the lows and then you know, it was just really good how they did this with them. It, th with them, I just don't ever feel like there's ever a low point. It's always just, you know, I hope this happens and all this craziness happens. You have the husband and wife who just, I don't know if they have divorces in their, you know, culture, but they should really have one. Um, but I loved everything that happened with them. It's like, well, I'm going to figure things out. And it's just like... Obviously, they're having horrible conversations. Stama and Daytac are just arguing back and forth, this and that. Like, I'm going to kill the Omec. You can't kill the Omec. Because apparently we find out that they just get super powerful as they age. So, bullets, apparently, even a sniper bullet wouldn't do much to him, which is just crazy. Um, that they, you know, grow so strong. So, that was an interesting little bit of biology. I don't know if that's really going to come into effect. Um... In the future, depending on how things go with Omek, I do have to assume that with them being the only two currently and trying to fix their ship, once they do that, we'll meet more Omek, maybe, you know, in Season 4, or depending on how quickly they move things along. I think they're going to save it, because we kind of have our villain for the season right now. So maybe Season 4, we'll get other really old Omek who are just like, you know, basically bulletproof. So that might not come into effect for quite some time. Um... We might see it happen a little bit this season, you know, once uh, the commander actually comes to Defiance and starts, you know, trying to shoot the place up. But I just love the way that they kind of played that. We got a little, you know, that tiny little bit of knowledge on them, which, like I said, could come into effect for sure uh, later in the season and, the, you know, all of next season, possibly. We have Stama and the Omek, and I can't think of the names. I can remember Kenzie because... They said her name a couple of times at the end of the episode, and, like, I just finished watching it. So her name is in my mind, but I can't remember her father's name. But, you know, like, Stama and him together, and she's trying to convince him, and, you know, kind of doing a typical thing. And, you know, he's not falling for it. He's like, you know, he would help her, but he has to save his people, of course. And, you know, I have to save my ship, but obviously he has to save, bring all of his people back, and I guess get enough power to kind of get all of them out of stasis i have to assume that that's what it is because they have the ship but if they're in stasis then it must be because they can't all be brought back to like normal a normal state without more power so i'm assuming that's what the issue is there so we got that and then of course when they go outside i love that little scene and stama's like standing in front of them and stuff like that and then she looks up at daytech uh right as they pass the little wall and he's just super pissed off they had a whole line of dialogue for him zero subtitles so i'm assuming that was just him swearing the entire time so i definitely love that it was just like him speaking i think this is the first time they've ever done that and it was just like all these words and it's like there are no subtitles they that just must be some bad stuff so i like that scene and then um i was surprised they actually didn't have a scene but i guess she didn't really have any more of a plan it was kind of just to save his life at that point and then we had Alak, who was able to escape in this episode, which I'm really glad happened, because when he was escaping, I was like, they aren't going to kill him off, are they? I mean, there are, of course, a bunch of machine guns going off. So I was a little bit worried, but I was really glad that he escaped. He had a really, he had a pretty badass moment when he kind of killed the guard. He tricked him and saying his hands were cold and stuff. So that was pretty nice. Um, he did escape. I was really glad he escaped. I thought he was going to get captured, and I didn't think he'd be killed, but I thought he'd get captured before he even got in the car and then he'd just get beat up a lot so once he got in the car i was a little worried because they were just flat out shooting at him at that point but he does escape i was really glad to see that happen and then we get the end of the episode um two really big things at the very end one was stama and her housemaid 
I don't know if her housemaid is kind of turning on them, and that's her plan. That's why she was getting, like, super bold, because it seemed like she kind of had her thing where it's like she's starting to go into an I hate humans sort of mode, and we're getting a little bit of, um, you know, detail on her mindset and how she views humans and things like that. But she was speaking very boldly. She was just being out there, like, you know, what's he like? You know, I like my man dangerous, you know, when you say the same and stuff like that. So I was a little shocked to hear her saying stuff like that. I mean, the only other shocking thing she had was like two episodes ago when she was in the tub and they had some really funny jokes there. Um, so I don't know if that means something or if this was just her kind of having a little moment where they were just, you know, doing a weird little thing like, holy crap, she's being a bit bold. I did like that, but it really made me suspicious. Like, she's talking about this hating all humans thing. If that's the case, is she gonna, you know, when this army, when the collective comes into the town, is she gonna help them and maybe kind of screw over, you know, the Daytac and Stama and Alak and maybe even try to kill the baby, stuff like that. That's what went through my mind when she was talking about that and kind of just hating all humans and how they did this to themselves and if they, you know, if we accepted all the aliens and we didn't, like, hoard the planet or something, that then, you know, there wouldn't be any issues to begin with. So, it seemed like they kind of, you know, I mean, obviously it was on purpose, they wrote it in there, but it's like, what's the reason that has me questioning it? So, I like that scene because it got me thinking, like, why is she being so bold and her thoughts about how humans did this and did that? And Stama has to say, like, well, it's a lot more than that, but... In her mind, it's just, we're kind of bad, and we're the reason that the war started, so. I feel like they did that on purpose. Like, it was a reason to kind of foreshadow who she's going to end up siding with, despite who she um, serves right now. So, that was a nice little moment that was just like, you know, this is pretty interesting dialogue for her character. And then, of course, the lack coming in, and it's like... I don't know what this says about me, but the first thing I noticed when he came in was like, man, he's got like a really blue jacket, because of course all they have is just white all over the place. Um, also, I think this was the first ever episode we actually got to see their entire house like as a full shot, because normally it's like you see the door and we get to see the inside, but they show like the full house. Um, I don't know, that made me think of the show Full House when I said that, but it's just like just a giant it basically looked like a, a white tarp over a house that's what it looked like to me so there was something that really stood out because i don't think they've ever actually done a shot that way where it's the full house and it was just like any other time it's just like the door and they're walking out it's really bright behind them because the whole house is like a sheet of paper and so it was just really interesting and then it's like here's their house and then it's just like instantly yellow campers and stuff just like makeshift campsites almost right next to him so it just really stood out to me but of course a lot coming back was really cool and then i i don't know i was so surprised that he did that i wasn't even thinking of that honestly is uh, i don't know if i have like some short-term memory loss i had already forgotten that stuff happened i was just like oh yeah he should be pissed about that and he he basically called his mother out on everything that she does there's always an excuse there's always a reason and he has that knife on her. The housemaid just did like a horror movie scream. Was just like, ah, and took off. So she's out. But I can't wait for this next episode. Um, based on the preview, it got cut off for me. But I saw the important part. He was like, they blew up the Ark. That's all I needed to know. So he doesn't give a crap about his parents. He wants them gone because they killed, they killed his wife. They killed the mother of his child. So I cannot wait to see how this next episode plays out. They've been busted. Um, who knows how that's gonna, you know, affect Stam and her plan with the Omac, even though that kind of failed in this episode anyway, but I'm really excited. Obviously, I love this episode. I thought it was incredibly well done. Of course, I want to know what you guys thought about it, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and my big question is definitely what you guys thought of, I mean, basically the main storyline of this episode, them having these flashbacks, and of course, although... I think, you know, my favorite part was the memory of Nolan's sister dying. I do have to ask what you guys thought specifically about Arissa trying to kill Nolan, or at least having the intention to kill Nolan before just being, you know, being caught. So, I want to know what you guys thought about that. I, I was just stunned. Like, I was loving all the flashbacks, and it's like, you know, he's 
talking about how he's sorry and stuff and then it's like it goes right into the scene where she I don't know if she should be more sorry or something but she had her reasons and it was just like he's sorry for doing something that affected her and he didn't realize it and then it goes you know the flashback goes right into her about to kill him and it's like huh I don't know if I'm so sorry anymore so you know I just loved it I'm not sure how much more detail I could give outside of what I already talked about um throughout this review but I do want to know what you guys thought about it so like I said please comment below let me know and thanks for watching